Hi friends, I am Heidi M and I'm joined today virtually from Germany uh, by Corpus Artistic Director and Co-Founder David Danzel. Nice to meet you, David. Nice to meet you too. Um, David, we're going to speak a little bit about the latest production um, that Corpus will be showing here in Toronto, Canada, but maybe let's rewind a little bit and talk about um, Corpus in general. I know that it's been in existence for a while. I'm familiar with, you know, with the work that you do, but what are the influences and the, the type of storytelling that Corpus does? Oh, lots to answer there. Uh, so maybe just uh, let me start with the very beginning. Uh, Corpus was founded in 1997, so I guess we're celebrating our 27th year. Nice. Uh, and it was founded by a dancer, choreographer, um, named Sylvie Bouchard and myself. My background is in theater. I went to uh, York University in the theater acting program and graduated in 92. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess I entered the industry after I graduated and I got lucky a little bit. Um, worked as an actor in various forms. I uh, did some voice work. Um, because I, I'm from France originally, I, I French is my first language, and so I get some, you know, I get typecast as the French French guy uh, often, and did did some television work as as the French guy, um, and of course also did a little bit of theater work as well uh, in Toronto. Uh, my dream was always to uh, start my own company, and when I met Sylvie. Um, I was, uh, I guess, introduced to the world of contemporary dance, which I knew very little about. And I was very much interested in exploring um, a more physical uh, approach to theater. And uh, she was more interested in, in, in exploring a more theatrical approach to uh, dance. So mm -hmm. we had what, each, what the other uh, wanted, I guess. And um, we started to collaborate, create shows, and uh, and then Corpus, um, I guess, was born out of that uh, meeting uh, between the two of us. Mm -hmm. And could you speak a little bit? I was reading a little bit about Corpus as well, and I know that for yourself, you are somebody who loves comedy and incorporating comedy into um, different ways of storytelling. So can you talk a little bit about your influences and how they continue to evolve over the years? And then we'll get into the latest show. Yeah, for sure. I um, I guess I was introduced as, uh, at an early age uh, to um, to Charlie Chaplin, to Buster Keaton, uh, the Marx Brothers, um, who uh, really um, put um, comedy on the silver screen, uh, and it was always very. Um, uh, physically based, you know, so it's not it's not text based. It's it it it's it really starts with body language, and and of course, um, timing comes next. Uh, of course, comic timing is is always key. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I I, I observed um, I observed these great masters at, at an early age, and I was very fascinated. Um, at first, um, um, I watched them as actors. Um, right. And very early on, I, I, I knew I wanted to try to do the same thing. Um, and then as I grew older, and especially after theater school, I really started to watch their work more as directors. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so that, that, that other side of their artistry um, really spoke to me. Um, and um, yeah, I guess uh, for sure they're, they're, they're a big influence. Um, uh, but, um, I, you know, I, I also have other influences, and I think contemporary dance was definitely another influence in the way that engages people's imagination. And it's not a didactic uh, a form; yeah. it really leaves things open for the audience to to come in and and uh, feel the dots. Um, and um, and and other um, visual artists as well. I find inspirations in visual arts and in cinema and in theater, of course, and dance and other art forms. Mm -hmm. And um, as, um, as somebody who's now, you know, creating works for the company, um, I know coming up very soon, the later this month, you're going to have the premiere of Mukashi Mukashi here in Toronto. And it is a collaboration. That's my understanding. It's a collaboration with the Kyo Company in Japan. 
how how does that start for you the process of i have this idea now i think this is one to what i want to explore and then moving on to collaborating with other companies yeah so um we were very lucky to see our work being um presented programmed in uh, many festivals outside of canada in canada as well but um we, we started to tour um, extensively internationally, I guess, about 20 years ago, and it's, it's been consistent, um, I'm glad to say. Yeah. So um, we have been uh, touring extensively in Japan. Um, I can't really explain why. <laughs> it's just, just the way it is. Um, and, um, you know, it's it sort of snowballed from a, a, a festival programming one of our creations. And, um, and then uh, fairly quickly after that, this was about 15 years ago, um, um, a company uh, from Osaka called Kyo, uh, it's a children theater company, uh, saw our work at that first festival. Mm -hmm. They had a festival of their own, the children theater festival. They decided to program us. And uh, we started, a, 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 of course, a professional relationship, but also a, a personal relationship, a friendship. Um, and they helped us to tour a lot throughout Japan. And for the past 15 years, largely thanks to them, uh, we've been touring all over, all over Japan. And so I, I, I'm there once, twice, three times a year. Nice. Um, and uh, after about 15 years, um, um, I approached them one day and said simply, uh, maybe it's time for us to collaborate and, and create a show together. Um, and um, at first there was, so it, it really started with our relationship as it often does, yes. you know, over a beer uh, in a bar uh, to <laughs> our, go together and, and start thinking about what, how they could collaborate. Um, and so they, they jumped at this opportunity and um, we had a lot in common. And um, the starting point um, really was to explore, my interest um, was to in, in explore Japanese folk tales yes. and compare them to Western fairy tales. Um, and so it, started, it, it, it felt like a good starting point because uh, I had read um, quite a few Japanese folk tales and was very curious and interested in um, in how um, different uh, they are from our own tradition of, of uh, fairy tales. And so at the beginning, it was very much a research project um, where we read a lot of fairy tales, a lot of folk tales, and discussed them and um, compared them. Um, it became an excuse to really... Um, explore our very contrasting cultures, sure. um, and um, and then it grew from there. Eventually, we zeroed in on two fairy tales. One being Little Red Riding Hood, uh, an old classic, uh, and um, and then The Gratitude of the Crane, which is also an old classic in Japan. But of course, nobody outside of Japan knows this fairy tale. But in Japan, it's a very well-known fairy tale. Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, um, I found out that Little Red Riding Hood, um, for many Japanese, um, is a Japanese fairy tale. <laughs> <laughs> so it speaks of the universal um, uh, aspect of this tale and how people have, have, have grown to own, own that tale for, sure. in, in their own culture. Mm -hmm. So you're narrowing it down to a couple of characters and um, Mukashi, Mukashi means or tr translates to once upon a time and you're now narrowing t into discussing the wolf and the crane as I understand. Um, what was it about these two specific characters that sort of a made it appealing in terms of the way that you want to explore body movement and comedy? Um, as topics? Well, um, so, yeah, we started with these two stories and then um, zeroed in even more um, to two iconic characters of Western and, and Japanese folklore. So the wolf 
um, you know, from the West and, and Ukraine from the East, and in this case, more specifically from Japan. So, of course, the wolf um, is a central figure uh, in uh, Western fairy tales. Um, and, you know, it's often portrayed as a dark figure, uh, dangerous, uh, not to be trusted. Um, it's used mostly to scare children from disobeying their parents or uh, <laughs> entering outside the home. Um, and, and then it, I guess its counterpart in some ways is the crane. Um, in the east, um, and in contrast to the wolf, then the crane um, symbolizes good fortune, loyalty, mm -hmm. longevity. So it has more positive connotations, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, but both carry deep roots in um, in uh, each uh, culture. Right. Um, and I guess it was just interesting to to take these two characters and, and develop, develop um, our own story. So we started to imagine a meeting between these two creatures and what would happen if, if, if the wolf um, uh, met the crane and in what circumstance um, that, that could happen. So that, that was sort of the, the dramaturgic uh, choice uh, that, that we made. And, but I, I say parallel to this, um, what was interesting to me, to us, because it was truly a collaboration, um, was to mix forms. Mm -hmm. So we were mixing two characters very much uh, um, belonging to two separate cultures, but also mixing forms. So, for example, we were, you know, we took um, traditional theater forms like Bunraku, which is a traditional puppet theater form or uh, kabuki, uh, also uh, a well-known traditional Japanese form, and see if we could twist them in a way um, uh, to, to bring in some Western influences into our retelling of the story, right. and, and, and vice versa. So it was really um, a work of, of twisting forms um, and to find um, different uh, comedic, uh, ways to retell the stories. Mm -hmm. So, um, interestingly enough, uh, I learned a lot about uh, Japanese um, comedy, which uh, is is very different uh, from our tradition. Uh, to start, um, they seldomly use sarcasm, and it, and it, it dawned on me that sarcasm was really at the root of our a community uh, culture, you know, everything starts with sarcasm. So um, that was one of the really nice discoveries that uh, was that, okay, so uh, how can we um, bring a twist to a traditional comedic form uh, like Kyogen? Kyogen is a, uh, a comedic theater form derived from um, no theater, which is a, a kind of the Japanese um, opera uh, equivalent. Yes. And um, in between two acts of no, they would have a, a comedic uh, element just to, just to lighten things up a little bit because it's sure. so somber and slow in form. Mm -hmm. And so we thought, okay, well, let's, let's take that comedic Japanese form and see if we can um, twist it. And of course, the line uh, always that interests me is to find the, 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 you know, the line between uh, parody and tribute. Mm. So that you 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 make fun of something, but you also honor it at the same time. Sure. Yes. Yeah, and so um, that fueled a lot of our discussions and a lot of um, a lot of the writing that that went into the show. Yes, I took a, uh, a peek at the trailer because I know the production showed in Japan last year. Is that right? That's right. Um, so it looks really interesting, and it looks. Um, it looks accessible as well in terms of you know what I'm seeing on screen, which I think is really cool because you know audiences should know that this is a, a show for anybody uh, because it, it really is about movement and and everything that's happening in front of us. Um, what was the audience's response um, now that it's shown in Japan and and anything that you took from that experience that you're incorporating into the one that's coming up in Toronto? 
So I've decided that the, um, the, the show that we've created and presented uh, in Japan is the exact same show mm -hmm. that we'll see in Toronto. Nice. Uh, initially, we thought that we were going to uh, perform the scenes where there's spoken word, um, and there's a few, uh, in, in English, uh, because they were performed initially mostly in Japanese, although there's a bit of English in there as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, we've decided, or I've decided, that um, it was important to keep um, the spirit in which those scenes, that show in general, was created. Mm -hmm. And um, and I think um, it'll uh, bring something uh, unique and um, uh, to, to Toronto audiences. And so we'll have surtitles, um, right. actually French and English. Uh, <laughs> for the show. But it's not it's not a heavy text uh, show at all. There's a, a lot of imagery, uh, a lot of um, physical uh, comedy, um, and um, it's definitely accessible to all. I would say if you have children under six, there's a few scenes that are might be a little scary for young, very young children, only because the lighting gets very dark. Right. <laughs> uh, uh, but there's no uh, profanity or uh, mm -hmm. nakedness in the show. To, <laughs> just to reassure parents who want to come with their children. For sure. Uh, you know, when I was thinking about what you were just saying now, I think it's, even if there are surtitles, productions like this one to me, should it should be okay whether it's in another language because the idea is that there's a... Um, there's visual storytelling happening in front of us. So regardless of what's being said, we should be able to kind of gather information to, to um, understand what you're trying to tell us, making us laugh or cry or react in some way. So I think, um, I just want to put it out there for, for folks who, you know, might not be used to the surtitles. Um, I don't mind them, but sometimes I actually ignore them because I kind of want to focus on what's happening. Yeah, this, it's the power of body language. You know, it's it's universal. You don't need um, you don't need to put um, uh, an explanation next to it. I think everybody understands, uh, a, you know, or gets something from a body that crosses the stage, and um, sometimes that's enough. Uh, you get a lot of information uh, just just from a, just from that. Yeah, and I think that's why it works with children, right? Because not every child is at a reading level, so they're getting the essence from the performance. So uh, I think sometimes I, we need to go back to that. <laughs> absolutely. And a lot of the show, I mean, I did mention text, but I think there's uh, three scenes out of, uh, I think uh, it's nine or something like this. So a third of the show has text, but the two thirds, the two other thirds um, doesn't. And it's all really with, uh, told through music, through, um, as I said, body language, of course, and, and a lot of images. Um, can you talk a little bit about the discussion regarding music? Because it's it's really important in these productions, as well as your, your costume design and lighting, because I, I find that um, what I'm seeing on the trailer is one thing, but once it's in person, it's going to be something else. Yeah, so, um, of course, the creative team, um, I try to uh, have really a good representation of both cultures in, in the entire production, of course, but in my creative team. So, for, so um, the costume designer is from Japan. Uh, the lighting and set designer is um, from Japan as well, although he's from Switzerland, but he's, uh, he's, he's immigrated to Japan and speaks perfect Japanese. Actually, he was a, a great collaborator because it's a good bridge between the two. Sure. Mm -hmm. culture. And then um, uh, for the music, um, um, I um, decided to work with a longtime collaborator, Annika Johnson, who, um, who has worked with me as a performer, uh, also as a creator. We co-created a show um, recently, a few years ago, and um, who, who also happens to be um, a brilliant singer and composer. Uh, so um, I asked her to come along, and she came with us to Japan for one creation period, and I asked her to um, compose some music um, trying to get um, some inspirations, of course, from uh, a traditional uh, Japanese uh, music used in 
those traditional storytelling forms right um, and see if, if she could put a, a modern uh, twist on them and um, now parallel to this I also used real traditional uh, Bunraku music, Bunraku being the, the form that I mentioned earlier, the, the mm -hmm. puppet uh, theater form from Japan, and then some uh, other cultural references more from the West, like the, the Looney Tunes, uh, cartoons, music, and that kind of thing. So it's really a mishmash um, mm -hmm. of, uh, of music um, elements, choices, which matches the mishmash of everything in this production because there's a, there's, there's a bit of everything. Mm -hmm. Open temporary um, mixing and hopefully forming a nice marriage <laughs> together. <laughs> nice. Um, so the run that's happening in Toronto is starting on September 24th, and I understand it's sort of a limited run. Is that right? Right. Yeah. It's only a one week run at the theater center. Yeah. Okay. So I'll make sure that people know um, to go to corpus.ca or the Theater Center website for tickets because I'm pretty sure they're going to sell out. Um, David, it's it's such a pleasure to speak with you. I am very much looking forward to, to experiencing this live and, and kind of reminisce of some of my own um, watching of comedic cartoons and some of those classics, as you mentioned. Thank you. Yes, please come. Absolutely. Thank you again. Thank you. Bye-bye.